Hi there, welcome to Cord Cutters, the show that's all about saving you money by getting rid of your pay TV subscription. My name is Janko Rutgers and I'm going to take a look at the WD TV Live Plus today and check it out as a cord cutting device. All right, so this is it, the WD TV Live Plus. It's a small box, kind of the size of an Apple TV, a little bigger. And let's take a look around here a little bit. Uh, on the back you find a power plug, USB, HDMI, then the Ethernet, uh, optical audio out and kind of your analog video out. And if you flip it around on the other side, there's another USB port. And these two USB ports uh, are important to this device because it's kind of optimized for playing back local content. It can play a lot of video codecs and basically any file you throw it, it can play back. But it also has a bunch of stuff that you can use online. We're going to take a closer look at the online services right now. So here you have internet media and if you access this you see they have a bunch of services available here. You can check out your weather, you can check out Blockbuster and rent movies online. Yes, Blockbuster still is around. And uh, then there's music services, Facebook, Flickr, and then there's Flingo, which is a really neat service. Let's take a look at this really quick. It's not available on that many devices yet, but it basically allows you to access a lot of web content from TV networks, t networks like CBS, like Fox, like the WB. And then here we have online radio, podcasts, uh, YouTube of course, Pandora, and finally Netflix. One thing worth noticing is, worth mentioning, is that Netflix has a slightly older interface on the WD TV Live Plus than on the Apple TV or maybe the Roku. So you cannot actually search the entire catalog. Instead you have your instant queue, which you can browse through, and then you can also browse through uh, various categories, like your recently watched movies, uh, romantic movies, gory movies, all kinds of stuff that Netflix recommends to you. So if you take a USB drive or an external hard drive, you can plug it in on any of these two USB ports and then um, play this content as local content here. You can play the local content through just through the video menu. You find local drives. You could also go to network media servers if you have anything like that, but this works just fine. And then you can access them through servers and uh, through the various folders in here and then just play it back. And this works really well because it plays a lot of more file tapes than let's say the Google TV device. So there's one big downside to this device that I haven't mentioned yet. They didn't build Wi-Fi in here, which I don't understand. It's $99, same price as the Apple TV, and they were somehow too cheap to put this $5 chip in there. But then again, you know, if you have, if you're comfortable with stringing cable through your living room, if you're close to your router, it's actually a pretty good choice because you can access a lot of online content with this. You can play lots of uh, file formats with it. So I personally really like and I would recommend it to the more advanced user that at the same time wants to have a simple interface and just click and play his file. Here at Cord Cutters we've been getting a lot of tweets about cord cutting from all you fellow cord cutters out there and Ryan is up next and he's going to highlight some of the best tweets that have come in over the last weeks. Hi, this is Ryan. One of my favorite parts about doing the show is hearing back from our viewers, uh, hearing about what sort of things they're doing and what their experience has been cutting the cord, uh, what their setups look like at home, what sort of toys and gadgets they're using. So today we just wanted to highlight a few of the tweets that we've seen about people cutting the cord and saving money on uh, not having cable. So we hear from Slippery Pete 10 who writes to us at Cord Cutters, need another reason to cut the cord? DirecTV raises rates again for the second straight year. Glad I canceled them. Uh, this is a topic, this is one reason that people have been cutting the cord. Uh, cable and satellite providers year after year are raising their rates 5, 10% sometimes, sometimes even more. Um, average price for cable is about $70, but typically it seems like most people are paying above 100. So to see that go up 10% every year, it's kind of tough to justify, especially in, you know, difficult economic times like we have right now. Gavin uh, at Britain Canada writes to us, ordered a 10 foot optical cable to go between TV and receiver to get 5.1 from OTA rather than cable. Another step towards no cable 2011. Obviously this is a guy who is an advanced cord cutter. Um, sound quality is very important to him and you know we applaud him because just because you're cutting cord, just because you're getting rid of cable doesn't mean that you can't have the best uh, video or sound quality possible. Um, there's a lot of stuff available now in HD 
and uh, increasingly Netflix and other services are you know running Dolby 5.1 sound so you know this is a, a good example of, of that. At 1234 writes, I think Xbox plus Roku equals no cable 2011. So obviously some users are going to be more advanced, but uh, this guy just shows you how easy it is. If you have an Xbox, you already have access to great streaming services like Netflix and uh, Zune Marketplace. Um, Roku is a great choice as well. It's 79 to 100 bucks, depending on which version you get. You get HD video um, and you have access to Netflix, Hulu Plus. So it's really just a, a great way of showing how easy it can be to cut the cord. So that's what we're hearing from just a few of our viewers. This is all about community, so we want to hear from more of you. Send emails to us at cordcutters at gigom.com. Send pictures, videos, tell us about your setups at home. Or you can follow us on Twitter, at cordcutters, where you can ask us questions, tell us about your experiences, and you know, keep the community growing. And now we've got a web series review from Liz Shannon Miller, who's taking a look at the thriller Black Box TV. Hi, this is Liz Shannon Miller, and this week's Cord Cutters pick is when it comes to interactivity, audience engagement, and experimentation, it's one of the most interesting series happening right now in the web video space. The thriller series Black Box TV takes inspiration from classic anthology series like The Twilight Zone. Every episode focuses on a different story revolving around a central question one that haunts the audience as the episode ends. Creator Tony Vounslaw has been working on YouTube for years, and by getting prominent YouTubers like Phil DeFranco and I Justine to act in Black Box, he's able to bring in a large YouTube audience pretty quickly, but he's then taken that and built upon it with interactive experiments like an online casting call, live streamed events. There's a lot of experimentation going on here, but it all pays off in a high quality product that gets really good view counts, especially for dramatic series on YouTube. So check it out, especially because, you know, there are a lot of series out there, but this is one that's not afraid to challenge what a web series can be.